In this video, we're going to look at how to use known trigonometric identities to simplify trig expressions. We've already seen a number of trigonometric identities, um, and those include the following. So this list is essentially broken up into these three categories of the Pythagorean identities, the even and odd identities, and the reciprocal identities. Uh, we've talked about all of these identities before, either when defining the trig functions in terms of ratios of side lengths of right triangles, or in terms of using the unit circle. We will sometimes, however, have to use these identities in, um, in different ways by rewriting them um, for different quantities. So let's take a look at the Pythagorean identity cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Of course, we know if we have uh, this left-hand side, the cosine squared plus sine squared, we can replace it with 1. Um, but we can rearrange this equation. Um, for example, we could subtract sine squared from both sides, and we would obtain cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared, which means we could either replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, or replace 1 minus sine squared with cosine squared. We could also subtract cosine squared from the original equation and get sine squared of theta equals 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And again, we could replace sine squared theta with 1 minus cosine squared theta, or replace 1 minus cosine squared theta with sine squared theta. And the other two Pythagorean identities work the same way and can be re rearranged in analogous ways. So here's an example for, for the other two Pythagorean identities. Um, and so all nine of these statements here are uh, identities that we are allowed to use when we simplify trig expressions, um, but they really all are based on the three black equations listed here. Um, but one should be familiar uh, with all of these different forms of them and, and be able to recognize them so that if you see tangent squared in a problem and want to simplify it, this list allows us to realize that we could replace it with secant squared minus 1 if we find that would be helpful. So now that we've seen a list of all of the identities that we've talked about before, um, as well as looked at how we can um, make variations of the different identities, let's take a look at a few examples where we were asked to simplify trigonometric expressions. In this example, we want to simplify the expression cosine theta times cotangent theta plus sine theta. What this means is that we want to take this expression and step by step apply either um, the trig identities that we've discussed or some algebra um, in order to come up with either a single trig function or some uh, basic expression involving um, just a single trig function. One thing that's worth noting is that there is often multiple ways to simplify a trig expression, so there's not just one route to the correct answer. Uh, so for this example, we're going to start with the uh, given expression that we have, cosine theta, cotangent theta, plus sine theta. And we want to ask ourselves what, which of the identities from the previous lists um, would be appropriate to use. Well, we really don't have any, any identities that deal with just sine theta or cosine theta. Uh, the Pythagorean identity deals with sine squared or cosine squared, which we don't have here. So the only thing that we really have that, that jumps out of us um, at this point is the cotangent function um, in, the, in the first term. And so we know that the cotangent, for example, can be written as cosine divided by sine. This is one of the reciprocal identities. So we'll replace cotangent theta with cosine theta, sine theta. And now we do some algebra. We have in that first term cosine times cosine over sine. So when we multiply those together, we get cosine squared theta over sine theta. Um, now we have a sum of two terms, a fraction and a single element. And this we can add this this sum, sum we can compute by finding a common denominator and actually adding them. So we're going to have cosine squared theta over sine theta, and then to have to write sine theta as a as a rational expression over over sine theta, we'd actually want to make it sine squared theta over sine theta. And now we have common denominators, so we can add. 
cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta all over sine theta. In the numerator, we have cosine squared plus sine squared. And using a Pythagorean identity, we, reali we um, realize that that numerator is equal to 1. So this all simplifies to 1 over sine of theta, um, which we know is the cosecant of theta. And so the expression cosine theta, cotangent theta, plus sine theta simplifies to the cosecant of theta. Now, as I mentioned, there are often multiple ways one can simplify a trig expression. Um, and so all we really need is one way until we get to the, the, final, the final simplification. But just to illustrate this point, let's look at another possibility for how we could do this. Um, so we'd start off the same way, um, and, and um, I want to pick it up from this point here. So we have cosine squared theta over sine theta plus sine theta. In this first approach, we went ahead and found a common denominator and added. However, another observation one could make from this step is that we do have a cosine squared theta in the numerator of our first term. And so we could rewrite that first term as 1 minus sine squared theta over sine theta plus sine theta. So we're replacing cosine squared theta with its equivalent 1 minus sine squared theta according to the Pythagorean identity. Well, now our fraction here is a difference over a single denominator. And so we can rewrite that as 1 over the sine of theta minus sine squared of theta over the sine of theta plus sine of theta. Um, 1 over sine theta is our cosecant theta. Sine squared theta over sine theta, one of the sines cancels, so we're left with minus sine theta. Then add sine theta, that's been there all along. And the end, we have a minus sine theta plus sine theta, those cancel out. And we're left with just the cosecant of theta, which of course is the same answer. Um, we, we knew that this was going to be what we, what we ended up with, however we simplified. But this is an alternative approach that will allow us to find uh, this, this simplification in just a different way than the first approach. Okay. Both of these approaches are completely correct, um, and there's really, no, um, there's really no distinction between them. Um, it's really just a personal preference and what you observe while you're, while you're doing the simplification. So let's take a look at another example. In this example, we want to simplify the expression secant x minus cosine x, all divided by tangent of negative x. And we're going to follow the same procedure as in the following, as in the previous example. We're going to apply step by step a trigonometric identity um, or some algebra um, until we obtain a, a simplified um, expression that's equal to the given expression. All right, so there's a number of places we could, we could start here. Um, the first thing um, that we could do is deal with the tangent of negative x in the denominator. And so what we can do there is we can use the fact that tangent is an odd function to rewrite tangent of negative x as the negative of tangent of x. Right, so sine and cosine are odd functions, so we can pull negatives outside. Cosine, if you remember, is an even function, and so we can just leave negatives off. Um, if they're inside the function. But here, tangent is odd, so we can pull the negative outside. Now, if we look at this, we have secant, we have cosine, and we have tangent. Um, and again, there's no Pythagorean identity that applies here because nothing is squared. Um, and so um, the only options we really have in the list of, of identities that we've seen are the reciprocal identities. So we could, for example, replace secant with 1 over cosine of x. And we could replace tangent with sine over cosine. And again, we have a negative there. Um, right, so now um, we're going to do some algebra. We have fractions within fractions, and so it'd be nice if, if we didn't have that. And so in this case, both of the fractions have a denominator of cosine x. 
So one option here is to clear the denominators, and we could multiply uh, this fraction by cosine x over cosine x. Um, of course, this is just multiplying by 1, so we're not doing anything uh, different. We're not changing the expression at all. Um, as long as we multiply and divide by the same quantity, um, this fraction will remain the same. Uh, but now when we, when we go to distribute this in the numerator, um, and, and the denominator is a much easier distribution, uh, we get 1 over cosine x times cosine x, which is 1. Uh, we get minus cosine x times cosine x, which is cosine squared of x. And then in the denominator, the, the cosines cancel out, and we simply get minus sine x. So after multiplying and dividing by cosine x, we end up with 1 minus cosine squared all over um, negative sine. Um, the 1 minus cosine squared in the numerator can be simplified to be 1, or to, I'm sorry, to be sine squared of x. This is the Pythagorean identity. Um, and we're going to divide that, of course, by negative sine x. And so sine squared divided by sine is just sine. And so here we end up with a negative sine x as our simplified expression. Right, so secant x minus cosine x all over tangent negative x simplifies to negative sine x.